All right, in this video, I'm going to do an example of solving a quadratic inequality. And to solve uh, quadratic inequalities, basically the way I do it is I almost pretend that the inequality is an equal sign, okay? And then, you know, so if this was an equation, what I would try to do is simply try to factor this quadratic. Okay, so if we factor x squared plus x minus 20, again, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 20, but add up to positive 1. Well, to get the x squared, we'll need an x and an x. I think uh, if we use 5 and 4, that'll give us a 20. I think if we use positive 5 and negative 4, uh, that'll give us our correct factorization. Okay, so a common mistake at this point is to simply say x plus 5 has to be less than 0 or x minus 4 has to be less than 0, and that's not correct. I, what I do, though, is I do kind of imagine, um, I do set each piece equal to 0, so I'll get x equals negative 5. If I set the other part equal to 0, I'll get x equals 4. These are not the solutions, okay, not the solutions. What I do with these numbers, though, these are the numbers that I put on a little number line. So I'm going to put negative 5 down there, and I'm going to put positive 4 down there. What you have to do for quadratic inequalities is we're going to have to check these numbers um, back in the original inequality, or equivalently, we can look at it in its factored form. And then we're going to have to take a number smaller than negative 5, plug it into the inequality, We'll take a number in between negative 5 and 4, plug it into the inequality, see if it works. And we'll take a number bigger than 4, plug it into the inequality, see if it works. Notice if we plug negative 5 in, if we look at it in the factored form, notice if we plug negative 5 in, we would get 0 for the first factor. So the whole left side would turn into 0. And is 0 less than 0? Well, it's equal to it, but it's not less than, so we don't use that. So I'm going to put an open circle to indicate that it doesn't work. Likewise, if you plug 4 in, we're going to get 0 out. So that doesn't work. And now I just test points. Um, I'll take a number less than negative 5. Uh, maybe we can use x equals, I don't know, how about negative 6? So again, I'm going to plug it back into the inequality. So I'm kind of asking myself, is negative 6 squared plus negative 6 minus 20, is that less than 0? If so, I'm going to shade everything to the left. And if not, um, it says, it turns out that nothing smaller than negative 5 will satisfy the inequality. OK, so negative 6 times negative 6 is 36, uh, plus a negative 6 is just minus 6 minus 20. And I'm thinking, is that less than 0? Well, notice on the left we would get 36 minus 6, which is 30, uh, minus 20 is going to be 10. 10 is not less than 0. So that means negative 6 didn't work. So it means uh, any number smaller than negative 5 also does not work. OK, next we'll ask ourselves, we'll take a number between negative 5 and 0. I'm going to use any number at random. I'm going to use 0, just because that'll make the arithmetic easy. And notice if we plug 0 in, we'll get 0 squared plus 0, which, well, that just leaves us with 0. And then we would be left with negative 20. Negative 20 is less than 0, so that tells me everything in the middle uh, works. And now we take any number bigger than 4. Maybe I'll take a million. Well, notice if you take a million and square it and add a million, that's going to be a big positive number. If you subtract 20, that's not going to be less than 0. So anything bigger than 4 also will not work. So it turns out our solution, using uh, interval notation, it says we start at negative 5 but don't include it, so I'm going to use parentheses. And then we go up to 4 but don't include it, so I'm going to use parentheses. So if you take any number bigger than negative 5, less than 4, not including those, do the arithmetic, you'll get a number on the left side that is in fact strictly less than 0.